7 reasons why God removes people or why people left you. Reason number one is your season has changed. When Moses died, God came to Joshua and said this, He said, Moses my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel, Joshua 1-2. I've noticed a lot of times when God removes certain people, it's because you actually have stepped into a new season. Part of a sign or a, a um, confirmation that you are in the new season is when Moses is removed and manna is removed. Moses represents a particular person or a people in your life and manna represents a way of provision that God provided in the previous season and now this is not happening. Sometimes a person loses their job or something is changing in their business and God is preparing the person for something new and one of those things is the Lord removes people. The second reason why God removed or removes people is sometimes people actually have been toxic. The story of Israelites being in Egypt Exodus chapter 1 verse 11 it says, Now they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with burdens and they build for Pharaoh supply cities. And if we see next chapter in Exodus chapter 2 verse 23 it says, Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage and they cried out and their cry came to the God because of the bondage. And so God actually was removing Israel out of Egypt he was taking them out from that place is because the relationship that they had with Egyptians and the relationship they had with Egypt was extremely toxic. Sometimes God actually will remove people out of your life because they actually have not been healthy for you and the place that you were in with them has gotten extremely toxic and you have to move on and you have to let them move on. The third reason is because God is preparing you for more fruit by pruning people that are no longer supposed to be in your future. John chapter 15 verse 2 it says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch in me that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now in verse 3 Jesus talks about you already are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. So the pruning of course happens through the power of God's Word but if we also be very honest a lot of times there's also a pruning that takes place by certain relationships being pruned out of our lives. Example of that is Abraham and Lot in at Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 we see that the Lord said to Abraham after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward, southward, eastward and westward. It's interesting because the word lot in the original actual language means veil. So it was after lot was separated from Abraham that the Lord said to Abraham, lift up your eyes and look. It's almost like lot was the veil that hid Abraham from seeing what God wanted him to see. Abraham received the promise, he didn't see that promise until Lot, veil was separated. Some people in our life are like veil. They are there for a reason, they are there for a season, but once they are removed, God begins to reveal more of what He called us to do and actually we are positioned for greater effectiveness for the kingdom and bearing fruit for Jesus and so instead of crying and then saying oh you know this is very painful and this is very hurtful we, we might we have to discern God's leading and we have to discern the season that we are in and recognize that God expects us to bear fruit and God expects us to fulfill His assignment on our life and if those people left and they're not coming back then probably they were no longer needed in you fulfilling that assignment. The fourth reason why God removes people is because they have become an idol in our life and we started to depend on them and started to idolize them. In Judges chapter 7 verse 2 the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give Midianites into your hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me saying, my own hand has saved me. Sometimes the Lord trims people, moves them on to other assignments so that you actually can lean only on God. So that going forward you don't rely on people but you rely on God. 
we need people all the time. The Lord works with people but the Lord also removes people because He wants us to be focused on Him instead of on the people. The fifth reason why God removes people out of our life is because He has a plan for them. Another one, meaning He has another plan for them and that plan does not include you and me. I mean think about Moses in Exodus chapter 4 verse 18, Moses went and returned to, his, to Jethro his father-in-law and said to him, please let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. Now Moses lived with Jethro for 40 years. Jethro got used to Moses but the Lord had a different plan for Moses. The Lord had another plan for Moses than He had for Jethro and Jethro had to let Moses go and sometimes that is the case where it's not toxic, it's not something that the Lord is pruning you and preparing you for a new season, it's actually them. They are supposed to be doing something else for God and not with you. It's God's world, God's purpose, God's plan, God's ways. The sixth reason why the Lord removes people is because God is protecting you through rejection. Your rejection could be God's protection. In Psalm 118 verses 22 through 24 it says, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, this is speaking of Jesus, the Messiah, how He was rejected as the stone, the rock of ages by builders of that day, the Pharisees, the leaders of that day, but He has become our chief cornerstone. And this rejection, nobody likes rejection, but this rejection, the Bible says, was the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. And I wonder sometimes if we look at our own rejection, if we look at our own sense of betrayal maybe when some people move on or leave us or um, get removed and we, were, we are like, man, why is God punishing me? Why is God doing this? But could it be that the Lord is preparing you um, by bringing you into a new season, like if it wouldn't be Jesus being rejected by the Pharisees, He wouldn't be my Savior, He wouldn't die for, for my sins, He wouldn't become a chief cornerstone. So I wonder if sometimes in a similar fashion the Lord allows certain rejections to protect us, to take us to another season. Now Jesus did not get protected through rejection, hear me loud and clear. Th this rejection had to happen so Jesus took our place on the cross and died for us, became our chief cornerstone. But in a similar fashion, we can be rejected and that rejection could be God taking us to a new level, God protecting us and it could be God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. And the day of your rejection, the day of your maybe disappointment should be a day that you're like, hey, God is in charge of this day. Um, all things work together for good for those that are called and to those who love God. God is going to turn evil for good. He's going to turn what men meant for evil for my good. And so you must begin to see God's hand even in some of these things that you do not control. Number seven, because He wants to bring someone else in their place. John chapter 16 verse 7, Nevertheless, I will tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you but if I depart, I will send Him to you." Now, disciples got used to Jesus. He was their friend, the Messiah, the Lord, the King of Israel, the Son of David, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the bread of life, the living water, the way, the truth and life. When Jesus said, do you guys want to leave me too? They're like, we're going nowhere. You have the keys of life. Your words have spirit. You're, you're the way. And then Jesus tells him this sad news. He says, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave you. And so their hearts, of course, were saddened. But Jesus said this, if I don't go away, the Spirit cannot come. And I'm pretty sure disciples were like, well, we don't want the Spirit. We want you. But Jesus says, it is to your advantage that I go away because the Holy Spirit will live with each one of you instead of physically abiding with few people, He will spiritually abide with everyone. Now, in this fashion, in this way, I wonder how many times the Lord takes things, takes people out of our life that we have grown comfortable with 
we grew with and he's preparing room for something better something that is to our advantage but we don't see it like that yet until those other people will come into our life and will stay with us it's interesting because Jesus stayed with his disciples physically for three and a half years but the Holy Spirit stayed for life and sometimes the Lord will take people out of your life who have been assigned for a reason and a season so that He can bring some people into your life who will stay with you for a lifetime. I've been in ministry for a long time, been longer in ministry than I have been not in ministry and I've seen this to be the truth. I've seen a lot of people who walk with me right now and I believe they will be with me for life. But there are some that came for a reason and for a season and while it's painful and while maybe it's grieving but at the same time I've learned to discern the Lord's doing and let people go who God has other plans and sometimes because God is protecting us or them or pre preparing to bring somebody else or shift us into a new season and the person that you should be most attached to is not the one that's leaving you it's the Holy Spirit that lives in you who will stay with you until the end of age and so get addicted to the Holy Spirit, get attached to the relationship with God, be anchored in Him, don't get so attached to relationships when they outgrow or they need to go somewhere because they've outgrown this place that they're in and then you feel like your life is over because God still has a plan. If God rejected Saul, He was planning to bring David. Samuel cried, he was grieving and God told Samuel, do not weep, go into Bethlehem and anoint David. He will take the place of Saul. So cry the river, build a bridge and begin to get over it to the other side. Step into a new season. If Moses died, if maybe thousands of people, Gideon left you and you feel alone, it's not a time to retreat, it's not a time to hide in pity, it's time to advance forward and move forward because greater is He that's inside of you than multitudes of people who left you. You're not alone because your faith is in Jesus. Your faith is in the Word of God. And He says, if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with, with you. If you go through fire, you will not be burned. If you go through water, you will not drown. So God is with you. He will see you to the other side. Keep your heart pure. Don't get bitter, get better let them go. If they're leaving, let them go. If it's God's will for them to go, let them go. God will bring somebody else and if He doesn't, that means what you have is enough to do what God called you to do. I hope this video brought a little bit of clarity, direction and also encouragement. Let me know in the comments below what did you learn from this video and from the seasons in your life when people left you? and how did you process that and what did you see God do because of this transition that you've experienced. As always, don't forget to hit thumbs up to this video, like this video, share this with other people, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you can be reminded each time we upload new content. I want to invite you to sign up to my email list. I send emails every week so you can stay connected. Because of censorship, we could lose this platform any moment. Uh, but if you stay on our email, we're able to be connected with you. I consider becoming a partner with our ministry. This could help us to take the message of Jesus in the digital content all around the world through your giving. Thank you and God bless.